Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. We are finally back for April 20th, 2021, recorded around 3.36 p.m. Eastern Time. Taking a wide look across the Equatorial Pacific and the Atlantic Basin, we continue to notice that there has been very persistent warming across the Equatorial Pacific over the last several months, and that has led towards a decline in physical anomalies out across this area. And that is likely going to be the trend as we continue through the remainder of April into May and even June, where by the peak of the hurricane season, we are likely to be somewhere in the neutral phase of the ENSO state. And that, again, where exactly we end up, whether it's warm neutral or cool neutral, is going to have a very big uh, impact in the upcoming hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin. Uh, we are only really about 30 days away, uh, almost one month away from the official start of the 2021 hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin, and we are only just a few weeks away from the Eastern Pacific season starting uh, officially. So again, this is now going to matter more so than ever uh, for most uh, of us currently. Now, focusing on, again, exactly what's been going on, uh, we've had a lot of downwelling occur over really from about 120 all the way through about 80 degrees uh, there. And what that has caused is the warming here. And in the Atlantic Basin, we also continue to see a warming pattern evolving, especially here south of about 10 degrees here. And we also have some fairly interesting uh, patterns setting up across the northern part near the Canary and the Azor Islands, which is located right here. And uh, as we progress throughout uh, the next few months, all of this warmer water, it's going to be very important to see if that will indeed sag southward like we saw again last year and whether or not this same pattern is going to repeat. Uh, again, you know, I'm sure everyone has seen the numbers that we've been above average predicted for this upcoming season. Again, a lot of these two main factors are going to depend how warm does the state of the ENSO get and how warm does the main development region of the Atlantic get as well? That's going to have a lot of uh, a lot of say in dictating power as to what happens, you know, months from now by August, you know, September and October. That's going to have a lot of, uh, to to do there. In the Gulf of Mexico, we are much above average across most of the area, even some three to four degrees Celsius above average uh, there in the Gulf Stream. That is again no real big surprise. Um, that does help a little bit for severe weather and even early season uh, tropical cyclone activity, which, believe it or not, early season activity, you know, has the potential to occur next month. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, mid to, you know, late next month and then into June where the early season activity typically gets going. Um, so I'm sure everyone's familiar with the changes from the National Hurricane Center this year for the Atlantic Basin. Um, but we are just about to enter the early season phase of uh, the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. So we are almost there. Uh, and again, we are going to have a little bit of ways to go, uh, but we will be there uh, soon. This map is a little outdated, uh, but it shows the general progression of what we've been through. This is the 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies. A, a quick reference here. This is the Eastern Pacific and Western Pacific basin out through there, extending all the way through there. And then this is the Atlantic basin over through here. And what I really want to pay attention to is these westerly wind anomalies here in the magenta and the red and, and oranges. This is all westerly wind. And westerly wind here at across the equatorial Pacific has actually led to downwelling and warming. You've got westerly wind here jolling that air, aero component. And that westerly wind from blowing from west to east causes a lot of downwelling out here. And that in turn warms the waters and that does cause re uh, an increase in vertical wind shear uh, across this part of the world out here in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. And uh, conversely, in the Atlantic Basin, we've actually seen some cooling uh, with these easterly winds. And again, these easterly winds have tended to cool uh, parts of the Atlantic main development region. However, again, as we're going to show later in the video, this area right here is really what we should be paying attention toward because if that's going to sag southward in the way that it correlates 
with the Atlantic with above average hurricane seasons, it definitely has a lot of correlation. We'll show that here in just a moment. Now, going off of th this, this is the CDAS methodology. It's just a different way of measuring sea surface temperatures and anomalies, but this is from tropicaltibbets.com. And what you can see here, this is April 20th today, and this is January 26th, right in through here. So this goes back all the way to the beginning, really, of 2021. And what you can see here is generally we've been in a gradual inclination uh, over the past several months. Our general trend has been upwards over the last several months. And again, we're kind of plateauing at this point. We're not expected to have any significant curve that starts to grow, you know, exponentially like that. You're not going to see that. Uh, but we are starting to get now into uh, the neutral phase. We are actually technically based on this out of the La Nina phase. Uh, and the La Nina will slowly fade as we progress through the rest of the next several months here. In the Atlantic Basin, in the main development region, we have continuously seen a, a cooling trend over the last several months. And uh, today's value is just barely positive. Uh, but again, this is April 20th and not August 20th. So again, that's going to have a lot of merit going forth with time that we're likely not going to see it this cool uh, in the Atlantic Basin. Again, uh, this is using a different data set than uh, this does out here. Rather than this uh, data set here, the CDAS methodology, it's an entirely different set. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind there. Now, looking as towards what might happen in the Atlantic Basin over the next several months here, or really over the next several uh, weeks, rather, not months, weeks, um, what we're going to be looking at here is the 500 millibar geopotential height. And this is really going to show at about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere uh, what the pressure patterns are like. And uh, again, this basically goes back, this is 8 a.m. this morning. We had strong ridging over the uh, most of the Atlantic Basin and a series of troughs embedded uh, within this very troughy pattern, a, a kind of a shortwave trough here, bringing a lot of rain to the Central Florida Peninsula. If you guys uh, live, if anyone lives there, we've been dealing with a lot of rain over the last several days, uh, officially here over an inch today. Uh, so that definitely is much needed. Uh, but we'll continue to move this forward and you can see what starts to happen here. This is um, really about by April 25th, within about five days or so, we begin to break down this ridging out across the Atlantic Basin. And what that does is it very well leads us to a kind of a neutral phase in the atmosphere. And if we actually look here at about 850 millibars, uh, what we will likely see here is we will see, there we go, we will definitely see that we return to a lot more westerly wind here. This is uh, really by April 30th. We return to more westerly wind anomalies out across the Atlantic. And what that is going to do is slow down the pressure pattern and cause gradual warming in the Atlantic Basin. And that really holds a lot of merit uh, all the way through about May 6th. You can see some of that warming uh, indicated here. And then we kind of get this next phase here. Uh, but what this is going to do is help to at least warm the Atlantic Basin ever so slightly and cause, uh, again, a, another warming event to occur. So we're going to be kind of in one of those cycles now, and this is going to become more important as we progress through the next several days and uh, into the next several weeks and months, rather. Uh, so this definitely is going to be something we'll be watching, again, as we kind of progress through that time. And just taking a real quick look at the MSLP anomalies, Again, much uh, we're seeing really much below average um, anomalies here. And what that really does is show that we are likely going and heading towards a lower than normal pressure anomaly and thus westerly winds across this area, allowing for some warming out across the main development region. So that's going to be something we're going to have to watch as we go through the next several uh, weeks here. Now, the model prediction for the ENSO, this is the April 2021 outlook here. Again, this basically uh, is, this was from early April. And again, what we're really looking at here, again, you can kind of see where the territories are marked. This is La Nina down here. This is El Nino up here. The 0.5 line on either side denotes a weak 
El Nino or La Nina conditions, and zero, zero is flat neutral. So again, where we've been, we, we have definitely been with a La Nina phase over the last several months, uh, and we have started that climb, and this was initialized from March, at the, the ending of March, and again, we were at about 0 0.5, so we were just there at the weak La Nina threshold. And as we progress through the next several months, again, the main months are August, September, October. These are kind of the two months, if you will, that we're going to be looking towards. And again, most of the model trend is for a neutral condition and then actually maybe even heading back into a cool neutral by next winter. And again, only a select few models have a warm neutral uh, and really only about three models have El Nino conditions. So El Nino, probably not happening. Uh, warm neutral is a possibility. Again, it's really split half and half on either side. So it's going to be very important to, to kind of see where this goes because believe it or not, even a warm neutral will have implications possibly significant for the upcoming hurricane season. So it definitely matters where we go from here uh, on that regard. And this is something from Phil Clockspot over at Colorado State University. This is the March uh, sea surface temperatures and uh, the ACE index correlation here. And again, this is what we've seen, this really above average area across the Canaries and the Azores. And if we compare that here, uh, from the 20, uh, the 28 day average from March 10th through April 6th, we can see again, this correlates very nicely with this phase two kind of, um, oscillation here, the phase two of the, uh, AMO. And that definitely has a lot of merit, this kind of phase two AMO, which is showing up very nicely here. And then all the way back through near Greenland. And that's kind of what we're seeing here, this kind of phase two pattern curving all the way back up to Greenland. So this definitely has now some of the potential for uh, more of this to kind of sag southward as we progress through the next several months. And again, not really worrying about this cooler than normal anomalies right now. Uh, that really is going to change over the next several months. And uh, again, the probabilistic ENSO forecasts, again, for August, September, and October, again, El Nino only has about a 10% chance. So El Nino ain't going to happen. Uh, instead, we will likely either be still in a weak La Nina or neutral phase. And again, neutral is just slightly favored with about 45% chance and uh, probably about a 42% chance of La Nina. And then La Nina actually rises by October, uh, November, and December back through about a 50% chance of that. So that's definitely something that we're going to have to watch as we go through the remainder of the, the, the beginning and kind of the remainder of that season, how everything will evolve uh, through time. And just real quickly for people who haven't seen, this is the forecast as of April 8th from Colorado State University suggesting 17 named storms, eight hurricanes, and four major hurricanes with an accumulated cyclone energy of 150 and net tropical cyclone activity NTC of 160. And again, that is important. And the next outlook will use the new climatology that NOAA has put together. Uh, again, NOAA's forecast will come out roughly about May 15th to May 30th, I believe, somewhere right around there. Uh, so again, we'll just have to kind of wait and see what NOAA says. But another above average season looks likely on the horizon. Prepare now while you still can. That's going to be it for today. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. Stay tuned because I have a lot more content coming to the channel. College finals are finally done. Thank goodness. Everything will be back in play starting up educational series uh, really soon as well. All right. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys some more later.